For some, this might be a humble RPG collection. For others, it might be aspirational or perhaps even indulgent. But for me, it's my dream collection. One that I've carefully curated over the last 20 years and one that I'm very thankful to have. Let's take a look at my top five RPG items from the collection. While the collector is always on the hunt for the next purchase, the next item from the bucket list, I'm pretty content with what I have. Sure, there's been a few items over the years that have sold and come to regret, but honestly, not many. And in the last 10 years, the most meaningful core of my collection has stayed much the same. There have been some new additions over the past few years, many more items out the door, but most of my precious items have stuck around. So here we go, in no particular order, and stick around until the end for a full shelf tour. If this is the sort of content you enjoy, remember to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm kind of starting with this Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook. So I picked up this in 2005, and why this one's important to me is because I got it very cheaply. I got it at a time when the stuff was not particularly valuable. Um, and it also just represented my kind of journeying into a more old school way of playing. It has incredible uh, Jeff Easley art on the front. And uh, it's well worn, like it's definitely been been used, but it's it's actually pretty good condition. Um, although it does have some wear, it's in pretty good condition for its age. So this is really nostalgic, and this kind of got me started on my um, on my old school journey. The next on my list isn't particularly valuable, um, and some would even say that it's probably not the best quality as far as a supplement is concerned. But for me, this has a lot of n nostalgia. It has a lot of nostalgia because this is one of the few um, books that I have from when I first started playing in third edition. Uh, so I really loved playing rogues and um, I got this source book. It's kind of one of my first ever roleplay game purchases. Uh, and it went out of my possession for a while. I lent it to a friend or kind of gave it really because I had stopped playing at that point. And then he kind of returned it to me. And so I'm um, yeah, happy to have it back. And uh, yeah, it reminds me, at the time it was quite expensive, like 40, 45 bucks. In what, 2003 or four probably. Maybe 2002. And so for me, this represents just my start, my start onto role playing. Um, my first book that I ever bought of on my own um, and the, the kind of the oldest piece of my collection. Nowadays, this, this series is kind of not really worth much you can get them pretty cheaply and they kind of look down upon but i still think they're pretty cool and i think they have some pretty good options if you're just playing with uh 3.0 so for me it's it's kind of one of the few items in my whole collection that i that i just wouldn't want to get rid of the next item i want to talk about is this astonishing swordsman and sorcerers of hyperborea rulebook and the reason that this is kind of exciting to me is because I picked up the box set uh, not, not too long after it first came out. So I was quite an early supporter of uh, the Hyperborea game. Um, and between this being published and this being published, um, I had the pleasure of working with uh, the game's creator, Jeff Telanian, and uh, I worked with him on this module here. Um, and, you'd, and you might say, well, why, why wouldn't you pick this something that you've actually written <laughs> and had published as one of your um you know your kind of your favorite items and it and it is um but this this one i can kind of just buy again if i had to whereas and this is the way that i'm kind of rationalizing this is i could buy this again if i needed to but this one here uh, is actually signed and has a note a personalized note for from jeff thanking me for uh, my contribution to the ASNSH game, and it's dated in 2017. In a way, this, this kind of symbolizes my uh, first published foray into, into RPG writing. I've, I've published a fair bit um, in varying um, sort of vocations that I've taken up, including uh, what I currently do for a job, but this was kind of my first published endeavor uh, that 
you know, that was purely for fun. That was something that I had come up with and conceived of and, um, and you know, kind of sold to someone for them to then publish. So, you know, I think this via this um, has quite an importance uh, to me personally in my, in my hobby journey. The next item uh, that I want to show is probably Dragon Bane. I think of everything here that I have, you know, on these shelves... Um, this is, this kind of to me represents where I'm, I'm wanting to maybe head, uh, with, with roleplay gaming. And I did, the very first video on my channel was about Dragon Bane and was actually unboxing this, this set. I haven't played it yet, but I really want to. And for me, this is kind of, I guess, where I've come to with the hobby where, you know, I'm wanting something that's quite, um, simple, easy to run, but still, you know, still modern. While it doesn't have these nostalgic elements that some of the other ones that I've picked might, um, it's still, you know, it still is something that um, I value and it's something that I'm kind of excited by in the hobby. Now, the very last item uh, that I want to talk about, and this is my number one spot, this is my Desert Island RPG. This is my Holy Grail. It's like if, if I had to just get rid of all of this stuff... Um, you know, tomorrow, if I, if I just couldn't have it anymore, and I could only have one item from here, uh, this would be it. This is, this for me is kind of what the hobby is about, you know, it's, it's, um, it's kind of everything I love. It is Dungeons and Dragons, it's like the first. While there's been innovations and, and changes along the hobby's 50-year history, I think so much of what we think about when we think of D&D was and is already in this in this box set here and me picking this probably doesn't surprise you if you have followed this channel for any amount of time because I do talk about this this particular um, publication a lot and really this is what we kind of have to thank for all of this stuff as including this which without getting too into the sort of the culture of things at the moment I think there's almost a bit of a disconnection between this and this sometimes, and I'm not big on, like, the whole you own the, the hobby something, but to me, it's like this 5e wouldn't exist without this, and the popularity of this game, the game itself wouldn't be there if it wasn't for this. That is what I would say is the most kind of important and precious thing in my in my whole collection um some of the ones that i've talked about already have that nostalgic value and from that perspective they can't really be replaced um but this would be hard for me to replace too um the prices of these have gone up fairly substantially since i purchased it so this collection isn't huge um but it's also as far as i'm concerned it's also something that i i really like and i feel like it's in a pretty good place so we have so Magic the Gathering stuff in here, those are both full of kind of vintage cards. Got the Mordheim box set. This is pretty much the whole Mirage block completed in, the, in that folder. Um, it is well protected, it looks like it's, um, this isn't heavy at all. Um, we've got some old Warhammer terrain um, and the only Funko Pop that I own, gel Gelatinous Cube, some maps. And then we get into the... Um, well, we get into the first edition section, the AD and D stuff. We've got some Hero Quest minis just hanging out, some Hero Quest dice, D20. Yeah, this is really kind of an you know kind of an important part of the collection. Um, I love that particular player's handbook. Um, I've had these three for a long time, probably 15 years at least. Um, and then all of you know these are the more recent reprints. So I have a lot of duplication there. Like I don't need that many players handbooks obviously but um, they're, they're all kind of different and uh, I like them all for different reasons. We've got Temple of Elemental Evil, um, we have U1, Secret Sin Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh, yeah just a bunch of AD&D modules, Ready Ref Sheets which is a really great resource if you're running OD&D, some more fairly iconic modules. AD&D modules, we won't go into every single one of them. And then the, my second edition section isn't massive. I've just kind of got the core books, basically. The Monstrous Manual, Tome of Magic, um, and then a few of the Skills and Powers ones, and the two different 
versions of the player's handbook. And, you know, um, DM screen and a bunch of uh, the splat books. Which moves us into the third edition section, uh, which is probably, yeah, I mean, it would be the most sizable part of my collection for sure. And we've got the three 3.0 rule books. Um, actually, I've got duplicates, don't I? So I think these ones are our old ones from high school, and then these three are much more presentable, uh, like collection copies. Basically, these are these are all in very good condition. Um, yeah, pretty pretty much near new, to be honest. I've got 3.0 books, um, the core books, a special edition player's handbook and spell compendium we've got two sealed these are sealed so all of these three are sealed so spell compendium magic item compendium magic item compendium i need to get rid of one of those i don't need two <laughs> monster manual two three four and then we've got you know kind of all of the players guides so players handbook two uh all of the com most of the complete series i think i'm missing one or two expanded psionics handbook uh, and then this is the adventure section. So return to Ta Temple of Elemental Evil. Um, and then we've just got a pretty... Th I think we've almost got all of these 3.0 adventures. The Speaker in Dreams was a, one that I really enjoyed playing in high school. And then all of the supplement books for 3.0, including um, the Faerun Forgotten Realms one, monster book. And then this is all Forgotten Realms stuff. I'm not a big Forgotten Realms fan. I don't know why I own it. I actually just like the aesthetic of these quite a lot. There's some there's some good ideas with the setting. I might do a video on Forgotten Realms at some stage, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just not a not a huge fan. So right here we have uh, on display just a couple of models that I've painted. Um, that one was painted really quickly, just with some uh, contrast paints, and then that's that took. A lot longer and then these were probably about two hours each. I've got my OD&D white box and we still have some third edition stuff so this is a special edition kind of I don't know if it's leather or faux leather but you know leather like at least. Um, special edition players handbook for fourth edition. This is all my fourth edition section here um, so just mainly the core stuff with a few of the Powers books, the Dungeon Master's Kit, and the Monster Vault books. And this is my 5th edition collection, and not ex not that extensive. I want to add Ghosts of Saltmarsh to this, but other than that, I, I don't really... I don't know, I don't really care too much. I could quite happily probably get rid of, like, everything here except for, like, the core rule books, to be honest. I'm not sure why I collect it. I've just kind of acquired it quite easily in, in like, bulk purchases and stuff, so, you know... This one is uh, Tolis by Monte Cook for 5th edition. Uh, Rap and Ethic by Frog God Games, so R1 uh, to 3. Gary Gygax's Necropolis, that was, was a really good adventure in my opinion. Um, that'll keep you busy a long time. Um, Star Wars D20, I played a lot of that. Played a lot of that over the years. And... Creature collection, and then now this is all my Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea sections, so just all of the modules, and some of that's in Shrink. The second edition rulebook, the first edition rulebook, and then all of my Dungeon Crawl Classic Lankmar stuff. I've done a video on, on Lankmar as well. And then going down to this bottom shelf, we don't have much left. Uh, we've got the Dragon Bane. Um, box set. We've got the Forbidden Lands one, which I want to run at some stage. These are all old dragon mags and um, dungeon mags and um, best of dragon magazines. That one's this first one is, in my opinion, the best. Has all of the um, some of the original classes like the Ranger and Illusionist. Definitely worth picking up if you're into like super old school. Original D&D. Mouse Guard, Burning Wheel, never played those. Not sure that I would. I'd probably more likely play Mouse Guard than Burning Wheel, um, but yeah. Uh, playing at the World by um, John Peterson. Yeah, John Peterson. And then this is all my, mostly just my wargaming stuff. So there's some Lord of the Rings battle game mags. Flames of War, 
um, and Warhammer 40k, and I've got some other stuff not that I, it's not on the shelf, but Necromunda, Mordheim. So we come to the end of the collection tour and my top five. What are your top five RPG items and what is their significance to you? I'm interested to know. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next one.